Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to another DM's Guild Review, my written and video view series. Take a look at the adventures and supplemental material at the Dungeon Masters Guild website. This video will be reviewing the encounter book Encounters in Icewind Dale, designed by Christian Joyce and Ryan Langer for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. A review copy has been provided for the purposes of this review. If you enjoy my videos, consider using my affiliate links for online shopping and supporting me via patreon.com slash Rogue Watson. Now, this is not the first Encounters book that I have reviewed from this designer. In fact, I previously reviewed Encounters in Candlekeep, Encounters in Barovia, I believe most recently Encounters in Saltmarsh, which were all new encounter booklets that were referenced, supposed to be drawn from those 5th edition campaign books. Now, this one, Encounters in Icewind Dale, was, I believe published and designed before Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Obviously, I think the idea was you could still use this booklet if you were running that campaign, or if you were just adventuring in Icewind Dale, which is a popular location for adventures. But I was disappointed that it doesn't have anything to do with, by the way, spoilers for Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, the everlasting rhyme, the, the permanent like winter darkness that is encompassing that land. So there's no references to what's going on there. There's nothing about evil frost druids and awakened animals. There's nothing about uh, the humanoid sacrifices going on. Like, there's so many cool encounters you could draw from that book, but I realized that a lot of that has to do specifically with the catastrophic event that's befalling that entire region. So if you don't have that, it just ends up being kind of a generic, here's some generic encounters for Icewind Dale, which can still be somewhat useful, but to me, it just didn't elicit that much excitement, frankly, after reading the book. And I am currently, at the time of this review, have just recently started running the Rhyme of the Frost main campaign, so obviously this booklet would be more useful to me than all the other ones. And yet, I find this one overall to be the weakest of the Encounter series that I've seen from the designer. That doesn't mean it's bad, uh, but... I found the ratio of good to bad encounters to be actually about even. <laughs> In other words, I thought there were about this many good encounters, this many just uninspired, not interesting encounters, and then the rest were fine, um, which is not a great ratio. It does still have the really good maps, um, but once again, I think the maps are maybe a little bit weaker. You know, just the art isn't quite as good. Um, so... It's, it's kind of the weakest offering, and it's unfortunate because this is the one that was most interesting to me, having, you know, somebody who was currently running uh, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Uh, what this includes is 24 encounters. Now, it says on the cover, micro-adventures. That's kind of a strong word. <laughs> These are definitely encounters, and an encounter is something that generally you meet... And, and it can be in town or it can be in the wilderness. And in fact, this actually divides them up into different like biomes, which is useful. But it's generally one event that happens and then it is resolved after that. Usually you don't have multiple steps. You can, but for the most part, it's generally something that happens right then you deal with it. Whether that's a combat encounter or a social encounter or you come across a puzzle or something, it generally happens right then and there. And that's the difference. Um, the better ones do have multiple steps which are more interesting, and you could almost consider those to be a micro-adventure, but those are only like maybe two or three out of the 24 that are included here. Most of them are pretty small, and and frankly, a lot of them are just like a single like combat encounter, like you would see like on a table or something. One of them is literally just like crag cats ambush you, which, you know, again, this was designed before I'm the Frostmaiden. One of the Frostmaiden encounters is like, Crag Cats ambush you, you know? It's the same kind of thing. There's nothing extra or interesting about that. The book itself is extremely attractive and lovely looking. I love the, uh, this kind of border that goes around. I mean, it just, it looks arctic -y, right? And it's got, not only does it have the embedded maps in here, which is very nice, as well as including them on the, at the end in an appendix and as a separate zip file, which is the most important thing. So you've actually got the grid battle maps, full color art, all that is there, which is good. Uh, but you also have just really cool art throughout to where it just looks like a really attractive book. And it's organized in the way that the designer has consistently done for all these encounter books, which is a great thing. They're, we're given the encounter level, the encounter type, 
a really nice overview and then where you could include it. And not only that, but they're also organized by region, which is a smart way of organizing it. So like here are the encounters that can happen uh, near water. Here are the ones that can happen specifically in the mountains. Here are the ones that can happen while in a town or while out in the tundra. That is actually very, very helpful. And then they're just broken up between all these different headings. So it's just really, really easy and quick to read and digest these. So huge thumbs up on that. That part is still very well done. It's just that I found the encounters themselves maybe weren't quite as interesting as some of the other books. This one is kind of nice with the, there's a white pudding here, which is an interesting monster. Uh, a lot of them are just, we do get like over a dozen new monsters, but they're they're less like the designer inventing new monsters and more like you're taking existing monsters and just making Arctic versions of that. So there's a white pudding and there's like frozen far goblins and an Arctic orc, you know, it's just kind of Icewind Dale variants of ex ice snakes is one of them. Um, they're just kind of existing creatures already that have been given that Arctic variant, but that's still useful. If you're running an Icewind Dale, um, having those kind of creatures is definitely useful. And there's over a dozen of them that are included, um, obviously throughout here and then in stat blocks or in the appendix as well. So we can highlight some of the good ones and some of the not so good ones, just to give you an example. Um, there is a, uh, encounter that is just an avalanche. Where is that one? The coastal encounters are fine for the most part. So this is the crag cat one packs of hunters of men and notice how let me take a good screenshot. Uh, this is the entire encounter. This packs of hunters of men. It's literally like four sentences. I guess not, there's not even a paragraph here. Like how is that an encounter? I mean, yes, technically it's an encounter, but the whole thing is just crag cats attack. Like you can read that off a table. Like that's, that's bullshit. That shouldn't be its own encounter here. Whereas my precious is a, a, it's, it's a, it's a sword trapped in a crystal and the players can either solve a puzzle or break the crystal. And there's an interesting system where, and I, I like the fact there's a brute force uh, option here, but if the players deal less than the damage threshold, which is 10, then it triggers this cold explosion, which damages everybody. So the players can brute force it, but it's going to be painful to do that, or they can solve this puzzle. I'm not actually a fan of the puzzle, which involves reading a riddle and then trying to figure out, you have to paint these letters in a certain way with your blood. It just, it's not very intuitive. Um, but I like the idea of like a system for brute forcing that is, that works, but is more painful for the players. Um, there is a avalanche, which the map is kind of a, a disaster looking, but so there is an avalanche in Icewind Dale, Ram of the Frostbane when rules exist for that, and they're not very interesting. Whereas this actually has much better rules where it actually says, okay, here's um, what they call the, the slide zone and the berry zone. So it's an outer version, which kind of knocks you around. And there's one part that threatens to envelop you in snow. Um, it works on initiative order. It does a certain amount of damage. It just seems to work better than the avalanche in Rhyme of the Frostbane. So that's huge. But the encounter is just an avalanche. But still, that's that's a useful thing to have in your pocket. So I actually do like that one. Um, and, and one of the coastal ones is you find a spell scroll in a bottle, like a message in a bottle, but it's a spell scroll. It's kind of got arcane glyphs. The players have to solve this little puzzle in order to get into it. That's kind of interesting. Um, one of my favorites is a social encounter in town called uh, Competition Time. And this one's just a funny opportunity. Basically, a bunch of uh, again, and I don't know if this would fit in *Rhyme of the Frostbane* because the the it's supposed to be all very dark and gloomy and things. And this is kind of a really funny event. Um, but basically, a bunch of townsfolks are participating in this festival where they try to compete on who can stay in the frozen water the longest um, while in their undergarments. And the players can either bet on other people and kind of interview them a little bit, or they can of course participate uh, by uh, I think it's rolling like con checks or something. And uh, the idea is the uh, there's you know they'll they'll start taking exhaustion damage and then when they reach I think level three they'll have the, the players and the NPCs will want to get out of there but one of them wants to stay in there until all the way to level five so there's kind of a drama moment where he's gonna literally kill himself trying to do this and try to beat the front runner and the players can either like move in and attack him and forfeit their own you know chance at winning and all this so that's just a really fun event you can imagine a lot of really fun like um, uh, role playing that can go on there that starts off kind of funny, but then kind of gets serious as the cold kind of overtakes you and things. So I thought that was a really fun idea for an encounter. And you can see here, it takes, you know, a good amount of pages. So there's actually more thought and, and care put into it, which is nice. And you've got just really random weird ones like this. Don't be mean where it's just, a, you find a man just beating up a beggar who's just had a rough day and you just have to talk to him about it. Like it's just a weird encounter. 
um, that I'm not huge. There's a bar fight at one point, which is fine. Um, a Yeti attacks the town, which is kind of interesting, I guess. Um, and that one you could actually flavor as Rhyme of the Frostmane, where it's like, um, oh no, the monsters are being displaced and be becoming more aggressive. And in this case, it's a bunch of hunters kind of ran back to town after trying to fight a Yeti, and he followed them all the way back to town and, and fights them. Most of these encounters, unlike previous encounter books that the designer has done, are, from what I can tell, all Tier 1 and Tier 2, and mostly Tier 1, which I think does actually fit with the uh, campaign book. So it's a lot of typically lower level, but and I think the Yeti one is a little bit higher because it uses an Abominable Yeti, but you're not going to find the big mix of like high-level stuff in here. It's generally going to be for lower levels. Um, hostage situation is kind of interesting. It uses goblins who are kind of extorting a couple to get, you know, food. Um, I just love a situation where it's like you get to like scout ahead and see what's going on. There's not a whole lot of information on like patrols and things though, because it is just supposed to be an encounter. Like you happen upon this camp, there's just kind of a woman tied to a tree, I think, and they're waiting for payment from the husband. Uh, the players can move in and, and kind of rescue, but it's a it's a cool looking map and a neat little scenario. I will say a lot of these maps use a lot of trees, and I thought at least based on the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden book that there's not supposed to be a lot of trees. This is a tundra. Like, trees are pretty damn rare out here, and yet a lot of these areas seem to take place in a forested region. So I'm not sure if there was some kind of misconception about how Icewind Dale works, or if just most of these um, are supposed to take place during that one, like, Lonely Wood area, which I think is the only real forested region in, at least in the kind of Ten Towns tundra, but it is supposed to be more of a tundra. Um, this is ours, is one of the better ones, which is a conflict between the Regged Men Barbarians and the Ogrillians, which I had to look up are half-ogres, apparently. And this one is nice because there's multiple steps here where I think you come across the Regged Men, they're trying to get back the reindeer that were taken by the Ogrillians, and it's just everybody's kind of going hungry and trying to, you know, fight over these this herd, although the herd is, I think, only a couple of them. Um, it, so it offers, you know, role-playing opportunities and uh, a chance to either fight one side or the other or side with one side or the other or mediate the thing or go get the herd yourself. Like, it's just, you've got multiple options there. And, and look at the outcome section. It's got, like, eight different bullet points of things that can occur based on the choices you make, which tells me that's a good encounter. You know, it gives you players a lot of options on how to on how to go about it. And then probably one of the best ones here at the end is uh, Witnesses, which is uh, you come across an orc in a cabin who's just got, uh, it's an orc family with a baby, and it's a bunch of goblins like just going it's it's almost it's almost plays out like a western where it's like the orc is like trying to hold off these goblins from attacking his family um because apparently there's some background there with him fighting off the goblins and taking stuff uh and then these goblins are invading and attacking and they're really trying to like kill the family and, and harm this orc and it's interesting because it's goblins and orcs you know both traditional enemies in D D, and the players don't really know what the context of the situation is other than there is a baby involved so maybe you would feel uh inclined to save to help the orc out it just could be a cool opportunity. And then for the first time in the entire booklet, we actually get notes on role-playing these certain NPCs. So I feel like so much attention was paid to this encounter, and yet others are just like, crag cats attack you, or, you know, a man's beating up a beggar. Like, there's, they're not all given this same care and attention, which is uh, supremely disappointing. But the ones that are, are very good. Like, this one is literally like four pages long, which is nice. But then you've got others that are just not very interesting at all and i think it's about that kind of same ratio where it's like there's maybe six really good ones six really dumb ones or ones that haven't been given very much attention and then the rest are just kind of fine they're not super memorable but again these are encounters you don't have to have all these multiple steps or things for them but they should be just something interesting about it and i think my main problem with it is that there was a huge misstep in like not waiting until we knew what rhyme of the frost main was because there's so many interesting encounters and things you could pull from what's going on in that campaign book, and none of that's here. Uh, instead, it's all just kind of generic stuff happening in Icewind Dale, and a lot of it could be flavored that way, but uh, it was disappointing to see that not a lot of them have to do with that. Um, in terms of the stat blocks, you know, again, it's a lot of the variants, Arctic Ogrillians, Arctic Orcs, um, Rosenfar Goblins, Giant Ice Toad, Ice Snake. I, I think these are all creatures that, for the most part, exist in 5e already. They're just kind of slightly different variants or things. But still is fun. Again, if you're you know going to be in Icewind Dale, you might as well use uh, more native creatures to the region. And then we've got the map. So you've already seen some of the maps that were embedded in 
the adventures, some of them are tied to certain encounters, like the orc, you know, cabin map, or the, well, let's flip through and show them real quick. Um, this is a different cabin, but there's the, this is the one, the orc cabin with the goblins attacking. Again, trees everywhere, right? There's so many trees. Why are there so many trees in Icewind Dale? Um, this is the, uh, I believe the Ogrillian camp. So it's nice to get all these full color grid battle maps. And then on top of that, uh, at the end, we're given just random encounter maps. And everybody knows if you are playing any kind of adventure that involves walking from one location to another, it's very helpful to have random encounter maps in your back pocket. And that is very helpful here. Um, I, again, with the forest, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but they're, they're nice to have. Um, and we do get separate zip file that's got all the different... Um, you know, variants and versions of things. I don't think this one comes with as many options in terms of uh, gridless maps. And 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 this the map um, styles themselves aren't nearly as attractive as the ones that you would see in Encounters in Salt Marsh or Barovia or Candlekeep Mysteries. I think, I suspect this was maybe one of the designer's first um, attempts at making an Encounters book. And the while I'm a huge fan of the maps, and obviously it's still going to be a pro uh, at the end, just know that these are probably the weaker ones if you're comparing this to the other uh, encounter booklets. So ultimately, I'm still, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good roadmap. Um, and this is actually, I believe, an updated one. So this this uh, entire product was recently updated within the last couple months. It is currently May 2021. Um, and I think the designer went and added this, man. Look at the differences here. I mean, it's just, it's a lot more attractive and cool looking. If you're using a river, I guess, a map. <laughs> uh, so ultimately, it's um, it's a helpful book. It, I love the Encounter series still. I think it fills a very nice hole when it comes to you know having those supplements available whenever you're going to run uh, you know these adventures. But in this case, this one is overall the least bit helpful. And as somebody like me who's running Rhyme of the Frost Maiden right now, out of 24 encounters that I read through. I would maybe be interested in using like two of them, which is not a great ratio. I was really excited about this one. Um, and of course, one of them is that frozen water competition because that just sounds like fun as hell. Um, I will say there's a good balance between combat and non-combat encounters, which is nice. And that's something these encounter books, all of them do a good job of, which is they're not just all combat encounters. Some of them are just talking to people or meeting people. Sometimes the combat and exploration is the same encounter. You know, if, if a social encounter goes wrong, uh, one of them is like you find a frost giant who's had his mind erased and he's, it's just a social encounter, even though he's a frost giant. Um, you know, those kind of things are, are interesting and, and can be kind of fun and it helps break it up. So, you know, when you think of encounters and I had this problem too, when I was first doing D and D, you think encounter like, okay, it's some kind of, you know, 1d4 plus two wolves or something. It's every encounter is just a combat encounter. But that's not true at all, even including in the adventuring day. An adventuring encounter can include a social encounter, it can, just meeting people on the road. It can include finding a puzzle and unlocking it. It can, it can include an, a hazard that you have to deal with or some kind of skill challenge or just skill check or just sneaking past things. Like, those are all encounters and the designer understands that and produces a nice balance between encounters that are just, you know, environmental or socializing or something versus just combat. But, obviously you will find combat encounters here. Alright, let's go over my pros and cons for Encounters in Icewind Dale. Pros is the number of encounters. Two dozen encounters for tiers one and two with an even balance of combat exploration puzzles and social role playing you definitely have the quantity here and you've got a good balance of different kinds of encounters pro over a dozen unique full color grid battle maps including random encounter maps which is useful to have if you are running adventures and campaigns in icewind dale pro over a dozen arctic variant stat blocks again also useful it, it would have been nice to have totally new creatures but um not necessary. It, it, it's at least nice to have those variants and creatures that would make, you know, some sense. And they do have, it's not just reskinned. It's, they have some kind of like cold powers and things. Uh, pro, attractive layout and design. Even though this is maybe one of the designer's earlier products, um, I think it still looks really good. It's got a great use of art um, that, you know, flavors those areas. In addition to using the maps, the embedded maps in here, as well as giving an appendix full of maps at the end. Uh, and I love that kind of order around all the pages that just it looks Icewind Dale-y and it's it's very nice cons several uninspired encounters that are little more than a single random battle like the crag cat ambush or just a weird event like the man beating up a beggar um there's just a number in here that I was like this is just a 
crap encounter, honestly. <laughs> and that's not good when it's that ratio. I would say it's like, you know, again, maybe a third, a third, a third, if you had to look at bad ones, medium ones, and good ones. Uh, and then the other major con I had, which is that none of this d ties directly into Rhyme of the Frostbane. And that was such a thing I was excited about because there's so many cool opportunities for interesting encounters based on what's happening in Rhyme of the Frostbane. And it's not acknowledged at all in here. So that's a bummer. Final verdict, the lack of references to Rhyme of the Frostbane coupled with some uninspired encounters makes Encounters in Icewind Dale the weakest of the designers' otherwise stellar encounters series. Thank you everyone for watching this video review. You can see my written review at roguewatson.com. You can watch more reviews and follow our own D&D adventures here on my YouTube channel. And you can support my work at patreon.com slash roguewatson. Shoutouts to Platinum Patrons, Joe, Will, Tyne Dancer, Manuel, Wizard, Princess, Christopher, Star, Loverly, Thomas, Ian, Captain Mike, Adam, Goblin Marks, Aiden, Instant, Lose, and Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper Crafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, Numa, Marco, State, Vicente, Gilberto, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Ross, Limpy, Spuds, Jerome, Fatboy, 619, Scalini, Nick, Farty, McButterpants, Blood Angel, Veronis, The Fireworks Factory, Baboon, Baboon, Sean, A.K. Cert, 2B, Nathan, and Fast Like a Tortoise. Thank you all very much for your support.